and welcome back to our live training sessions. So, um, we're at TKD Coach Academy. Welcome everybody that's here. So today we're going to cover banded dolly chaggy. So back of our turning kick. Anybody who's checked out our Fight Chat Friday episode from last week, and we cover that in detail there. So the whole idea now is that we give you some practical takeaways to be able to use based on that episode. So every Tuesday we're going to do a live session here on YouTube. So 7.15 um, in Irish time, that's GMT, so wherever you are around the world. Actually, that's a, that's a good idea. Maybe we should comment where you're watching from. That would be really cool to see where people are tuning in from. Um, so get involved in the chat box. So every Tuesday we're going to be here as far as lockdown goes in Ireland at least, and we'll see what happens then. So these sessions are free. All we ask is you just hit the video a like and subscribe to the channel. And it would be really cool as well if maybe you just took a, a snap and put it on your story and just tag us on your preferred social media platform. So at TKD Coach underscore Academy across all social media. So we really appreciate that. And uh, we hope you're gonna to enjoy today's session. It's gonna really focus on banded dolly chaggy. And so where you call that back reverse turning kick. If you're not an ITF Taekwondo, maybe it's known as spinning wheelie kick, etc. There's lots of different names for this one. So we're gonna really break it down into covering the prep of this. So sometimes people have um, some issues with the prep and getting the body positioning right, the spin, all of those little things. And we're gonna then break it into the shot itself, give you some tips how to use it with more efficiency and to land it a bit more precise, hopefully, and also some recovery options. So we're gonna break it into those three steps. And uh, of course, as always, get your questions in and the more questions that we have from people, the more value that it will give to everybody else. So if you don't know who we are, I'm Richie Ford, and I'm with Adrian Byrne. Together, we are TKD Coach Academy. Uh, we're just trying to shine a light on some ITF Taekwondo competition, training, and performance, all those bits, um, coaching, etc. So if that's something that you'd like to get involved with and learn a bit more, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Check us out across various social media or on literally everything from TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, the whole lot. And yeah, hope you enjoy the session. Okay, and um, so we'll go in to get started. And we'll go from there. So yeah, Kelly, take one. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a bit of warm up. Obviously, if you don't know this kick, it's very, very valuable. So it's a very useful kick. Um, in particular, to be able to have as a weapon um, to counter opposite planes. So we'll go through that a bit more in detail later. But basically, if you're against somebody with very leggy attacks off the front leg, it can be quite useful to be able to spin in a certain way, whether that's to the body or to the head. So we'll cover that in detail a little bit later. Um, of course, it's a very nice kick. It's fun to be able to do it. So anybody who is interested in, in finding out a bit more, it's, it's a fun one to do. You'll enjoy it. And of course, it's very threatening to uh, an opponent. So it's a good one to have in the bag. So I hope that you pick up some good tips today and be able to put it into action, hopefully, when we get back into a bit more live stuff. So, right, let's get started. And um, we're going to just get body moving a little bit, and then we're going to get into the more intricate details. All right, so just, just on the toes first off, just moving around, bounce up and down, just rotate one arm, big circles on one side. And on the other side, go backwards. So not in the same direction, just crisscross. Just get a bit of, I'm gonna come into the middle of the shot. Yeah, so just a bit of coordination there to get us moving, get the brain firing, ready to go. And switch, so start off at one side, and then get opposite. So one hand forward, one hand back. So like you said, anybody got any questions, and um, maybe based on our fight chat Friday last week, or anything like that, just drop them in and to the chat box, yeah? Okay, so from here, we're gonna punch just left and right. Get moving, get the body flowing. This is one that you probably don't wanna be showing from cold, you wanna be warmed up, ready to go, especially things like ankles and that. I know Adrian is gonna cover um, ankle mobility and strengthen the calves and things like that, so important to be able to fire properly on this one. All right. Just hands on the hips, we're going to go with pogos. This is like a pogo stick without bending the knees too much. So really just pushing it from the calves without too much of a bend. You see here, higher and higher on each one. Okay, 
And uh, that's good. So next we're just going to go to a squat and front kick. So maybe two double shoulder weight is enough. Get the body straight. Imagine that you have something on the head you don't want to drop. So just squat, lift up one side, front kick, and then. Okay, now we're going to do lunge, same thing. So you go hands on the hips from here maybe. So you just go lunge and up. Yeah, so keep the hands here. You can't really see my feet when you get the idea. So just lunge, jump and switch. So down, don't touch the floor and just switch. Just get the body primed. Then we do a bit of spinning. Alright. And as the finish off, we're just going to do a few empty spins. So basically, one hand, uh, sorry, one leg at the front, and you just spin through on your back leg, almost creating a circle around your front leg. Okay, so kind of like a helicopter effect, just an empty spin. So get on the toes, nice and easy, spin through, and down. You don't have to lift your legs so high. Ready? Make sure you're spinning on the ball as well, not on the heel. Good, let's get started. So, leg. Two up. Now, do a shot. One more. Good. I'm going to hand you off to Adrian, who's going to go through a couple of details to get us cracking. Okay, folks, so they're taking off some of the general things. One of the principles that we're going to work on is trying to make sure that the foot is able to hold that kind of high heel position. So where we're up on the ball of the foot and we're able to hold that strongly so that we can spin and maintain our spin. So one of the first things we're gonna do is just some standing calf raises. You can have some support next to you if you need it. I'm gonna do about 10 or 12. I want you to keep going to 20. So we're gonna press, hold, come back down. Press, hold, come back down. So just keep going. It's a really easy, almost silly easy exercise but it's well worth doing just to make sure that we're teaching the foot how to make and hold that shape that we're going to need when we're spinning through because one of the most common faults that we're going to have to correct as we get into banded audio chaggy is dropping onto the heel because it throws the whole body out of position okay let's see another five or six before we move to the next exercise next exercise super easy Grab the fingers, reach tall. We're going to lengthen the posture, press up onto the ball of the foot, and as we go from foot to foot, okay, we're keeping on the ball of the foot. So this is tall walking, and from there we can go backwards. So the goal is to just keep that ball of the foot extended, keep the arch in the foot, and we'll see how we go. All right, next thing we're going to focus on is the spin itself and how we might make the spin faster. So if one of the first things we'll do is look at how we use the arms to increase the speed of the spin. So standing in a parallel stance, we're gonna pick a foot, my right foot in this case, and I'm gonna turn in the direction of the spin. What I'd like you to do is reach over your left shoulder or around your left shoulder as you do it to see what happens with your spin. You can try both sides. And because we're starting from such a kind of a, an awkward front facing position, you might find the balance is a bit different, but touch, bring yourself around. Touch, bring yourself around. Try that two more times on each leg and try to make sure the head follows the hand and we stay up on the ball of the foot, staying tall each time. Now we want to accelerate that spin. So we're going to bring both hands with us to the opposite chest as we turn. So I'm spinning on my right and both hands come to my left chest and we arrive around. Spinning on my left, both hands come to the right chest and around. Try once again on each foot. Pull tight. And it'll help when we're doing this spin itself if the hands start a little further and we then pull tight. Well, that's a good place to start. We'd like to encourage a fast spin. So I have a few tools and a few little exercises that you can try just to encourage a fast spin and a straight line. So this is just a pull left to its own devices it's going to fall down, okay? A broomstick will do perfectly. 
So all I want to do is give myself a little space so it's out there, stretch my arm, turn and catch. So I want to be on the ball of the foot. I can even set the ball of the foot first, heel pointed towards the pole, turn and catch. Emphasize getting the eyes around, seeing the pole once again before the spin. So we have one, and that helps you to be accurate as well. So we can try that, make a game of it, see how many you can get in a row. We can add a little bit of challenge to it. And if we take a broomstick, usually there's a rounded end, stand it on the rounded end. So I have here a lacrosse ball, any ball will do, or a bean bag. And we'll do the exact same thing, but I'm just going to release and drop it. Of course, I said to, I said to Richie, that's exactly what happened. I did three in a row, no problem at the beginning. So here, and same thing happens. And we catch. So all we're trying to do is get the head around fast, because if the head is going slowly, the rest of the spin is going to so, uh, go slowly for us as well. So I'm going to pass back to Richie, and we're going to start talking about the technique itself and some of the preparation. Okay, yeah, so some great exercises there to really help you to set a bit of a foundation. I was just looking at some of the comments there um, as I switched off to Asia. So we have an array of people from the US, from Poland, from France. So hi everybody, uh, thanks for joining in. So it's great to see people from all over the world and even people from as far as Mitchellstown, believe it or not. And um, so extremely far away from where we are right now. And um, so let's get involved with this, the prep of this. So when we talk about the prep of the kick, what are we talking about? So like the two things that Adrian just um, touched on, the standing foot is quite important. And um, so we want to really um, focus on that, the body positioning and the use of the hands. Okay, so it's very, very important that we focus on some of these things. So um, the first thing that we want to look at is the body positioning. So when we do a band of ideally you want to have the body position not so tall. So if I hit this hit and my body position is quite tall, it's more difficult to spin. Okay, and chances are 90% of the time, based on what we've seen um, through a lot of videos, this is used more of a counter attack and especially against a front leg attack from your opponent, they're going to hit you right in the back and you're going to fall over. And so we see one of the comments there, somebody said, I hope I don't fall over on this kick. So this is the number one thing that you got to be sure of. So, in the prep of the kick, it's very important when I do this, I like to bring my head down towards the ground. Okay? It almost comes in a loop fashion. Okay? Around it like this. So as you hit the kick, you want to get pretty low to bring your body position up. Now we've seen some really cool clips of people land this as well. And so, if you can get right under Jack and Erislin from Norway, was a good example, you can get right underneath, and it's all about getting that head position down. Okay, so if you can get the head position low, that's a very good start. So, just getting confident and being able to drop your weight down is a very important thing. Okay, so from here, you want to be down as opposed to being up tall when you hit this kick. Alright, so quite important to be able to do this one. And so really focus on that as a starting position. Another thing in the prep is if you can almost have your foot a little bit turn, it will help. So if you're very much full facing, this kick is quite difficult. And my body position, of course, is going to be more upright. So if you can really get your prep set up here, it really helps you to so come around to hit that kick a little bit smoother. So really being able to just get that inside step up here as you go will be a massive help. So there's two things that we've got straight away in the prep. And another thing that I see people do very much and uh, is lifting very early. So they lift here as if they're doing a big massive swing in the dip. Okay, you want to keep it really efficient and really compact. So as I want to rotate everything, keep my body close, think of like a spinning top, you want everything to be compact and spin really close. So as you get to here, you want to be turning this direction coming up with the banded other. Okay, so when you do that, it's very, very important that you don't lift too early. Alright? It's like when we do um banded dolly chaggy and parents. If you want to be able to hold that kick, it's best not to lift it too early. It's a waste of energy. Okay, so it's the same principle here. You want to reach here and that little step helps you up here. So I'm turning the hips. Now I'm already facing this position. And it helps me to also spin the potential kick here. Come in a circular fashion. 
All right, so there's a couple of tips there for you to take away on that. On the fret, we've got that little step to set you up so you're not full facing, not being completely tall in your posture. You want to get low, be able to circle around, and using the hands and also not lifting too early. So a couple of tips there on that one. Adrian is going to take a look at some things now on the shot itself and um, some tips on the actual spin. Because I know the spin is a problem for a lot of people and something that catches people how to get this spin and become comfortable with it. Okay, so let's take one or two little things and make sure, make sure I don't fall over that and uh, do myself in. So one of the first principles I want to look at, and it's kind of following on directly from where Richie left off there, is that the angle that the body takes when we're hitting here, okay? And there's a few things that we, you know, traditionally we see people get wrong early on. And we already talked about what happens where you fall onto your heel. And what usually happens is you start your spin, you fall onto the heel, and you end up hitting with the blade of the foot while falling forwards, okay? So a bad place to be. And if you fall to the heel at a different time, you'll just miss, go past the target, and you'll end up in a very, very dangerous position. That's the one that people should worry about. You don't want to be there. So if we want to have some balance, first thing we might train is looking at the 360 spin, the full recovery, okay? And to do that, we don't want to spin like I did in some of the practice ones where I'm over my center of gravity, where my head is over my foot. I want to make a diagonal line. So here's my front foot. Okay, and once I point the heel, I want to keep my head back here and a diagonal line all the way down to my foot. So I send my foot out and then it comes back around. So in doing that, I'm spinning off axis. And what that lets me do is, after the momentum runs out, I'm naturally falling back to this finished position. Whereas if I stand super tall, I can get back here, but I'm just as likely to go forward or a little left or right. The other advantage for sparring is if he's kicking towards me or he's looking to punch towards me, my head is staying back here as far as possible. So I'm sending my foot without hopefully bringing the head forward. So we want to reach that position. Second thing, talking about that reach, okay? You can see in everyone that myself or Richie have thrown, we're extending the foot. And that doesn't matter whether we're going 360 and back to here or stopping on the target, the 180 shot, and coming away. Whichever one we throw, we're going to point the foot. So we're not trying to destroy the opponent at the end of this shot, okay? Usually. There's no knockout intended. We're looking to get score and we're looking to get reach. And the most likely thing a person can do in defense is plant their back foot and lean away. So we want every ounce of reach that we can get, okay? So that's second principle that we're gonna to look to keep and, and work towards. Now I just wanna talk about creating a fast spin and being efficient with it. And then I might hand back to Richie to talk about the difference between the 180 and the 360 and where we might use them. So, for speed. Uh, might go with left leg for a second. So. We want to have the hands in a normal, natural spine position, whether it's here, here, wherever your natural position is. We're bringing the hands from this wider distance, okay, further away from the body, okay, as we turn, so they're further away from the body, and then we're tightening them towards the body as we spin. And that's gonna allow us to accelerate. So even with just the hands, that's gonna add to our acceleration. We're also going to lead with the head. So the head has to spin quickly to bring us around quickly. So the head starts, my heel is pointing to the target, and my hands pull in, letting us come around quite quickly. Okay? So you want to feel comfortable with all of that happening at the same time. The heel pointing, head staying away, looking over the back shoulder, and pulling the hands from further away, close to the body. Okay, and that's going to help us with the spin. So, just a quick recap there. Definitely strong arch, keep yourself on the ball of the foot so you don't fall forward. Don't try to spin upright. Maybe a little bit more so on an attacking reverse turning kick, but in most cases, 
try to keep the head back of the spinning foot, okay, the foot that's on the ground. That will help you recover your position, whether you're going 360 or you're going with the 180 kick. And finally, with the spin, to accelerate that spin, we want to start with the hands longer and pull towards the opposite shoulder, the one that's furthest from your opponent, and that's going to make your spin more efficient, okay? Of course, if the foot was flat, you've got more friction on the floor, and that's going to damage your potential in terms of getting a fast shot. So, Richie, I think we're going to talk about the, uh, the difference between the 180 and the 360. Yeah, cool. Uh, apologize, guys, if there's a bit of noise in the background here. It's just really heavy rain coming on the roof, so apologies if there's a bit of crossover there. Um, so, on, the, on that 180 kick, so we've got the direct groove, what we just seen here. So, basically, you're already having your rear leg set up to do the kick. One, and then the other option, one that I actually really like um, being a left legged fighter, so I usually fight off the left. 90% of people are leaning off the right, so that option is not a big If you just want to get off on the blind side, and so if somebody would come across this side of my body with kick, it's very difficult. Obviously, the shoulders in the way, and you can just tuck under here. Very difficult to get a score or a turn on that one. So, another option you have is you can step. So, and um, usually if someone is coming towards you, this step is really good because it adjusts the distance with you. Okay, obviously this pad is moving, so I'll just show a different style. So from here, it's just one and two. So you're pulling this front foot to the back. You have two options to do it. If the distance is um, where you want to maintain the distance, you can just literally step, and then that step is already done through that we talked about, drop and get high. Okay, the other option is to use a step away to maintain distance from an oncoming opponent, so maybe you're getting the rhythm, and then you step there with them to maintain that distance and then fire into the space between the two. So I'll show you from the front, so you can basically step behind. This leg now at the back will work. Okay, or you can just switch one and two. All right, then this. This switch one, really good with speed, it almost catch me by surprise, and they're like, whoa, what was that? And it's almost done. So it really links well with the speed um, and things the agent touched on with the spinning earlier. So if you can go, the speed of that will be really dynamic. Um, so there's two tips on that. Um, anything else that we want to touch on, Adrian, before we move on? Uh, so, yeah, I suppose we've covered there, but the, the quick question that was in there was any th uh, drills or exercises to emphasize lengthening the foot uh, for that, uh, you know, for to maximize the range. So, if you maybe want to touch on one or two ideas there, and then we'll have a look at some of the tactical applications, I suppose. Great. Yeah, so on that one, um, just for people that aren't aware, Aiden touched on already, but ideally for scoring points here, not really about maximum damage. You want to use the full distance that you can get. So you want to be using your foot position in this range as opposed to the heel, uh, which will cause maximum damage. So it's all about distance management and being able to get your shot off in the correct distance. So for this one, um, I really would bring it all the way back to mobility exercises. So I'd be looking to be able to just feel it on the wall, be able to gain control in all these various positions. Just have this ankle mobility. And um, even the drills that Adrian went through here, all of these specific exercises will really help you be able to get this off. And I would strip it right back to go on from here. So just lift and just point your toes forward. That's a good place to start. Just getting that off and here. On that subject as well of distance management, and you can see the difference, for example, between you being this close, you getting off the shot, versus being here, you getting off the shot. So we touched this uh, briefly on Fight Jack Friday, and it all comes down to your body position. So the lower you can get, then the more play you have in the distance of how close you can get it off. Of course, the closer your opponent is, the more follow through they can get, and you gotta be aware of what comes next, and your recovery is super important, which we will touch on a little bit as well. So briefly, Asian talked about the options of all the way through, helicopter analogy, okay, versus one, and land. So you gotta be aware of the two options that you got for recovery here. Okay, and they all come into distance. So what's safe, what's not safe, based on where your opponent is and the distance they're coming through.
So yeah, anything else to touch on there? We've, uh, and we have a great question there from uh, Mrs. Katarina Murphy that we might tackle at the end because it's looking at having a, a, a games for understanding approach or a, a constraints-led approach and how we might introduce this particular uh, technique. Uh, and I think she's particularly looking at aiming at uh, children in younger classes. So we might uh, do that one towards the end. And uh, in the meantime, and again, any other questions like that, please, please folks, submit them. It'd be wonderful. We will tackle them. Um, but maybe introduce one or two other areas first. I might get started on just things that we'll need to do to be able to use this kick effectively, and then also elements that we can use to help us and uh, make it an effective kick in sparring. So one of the things we maybe want to just start at is talking about the spin and the fact that the same spin and the same turn and the same initial body position, like when we had the universal chamber for the kind of the side kick, uh, turning kick, and hook kick. If you can deliver the same or three, two or three different shots from the same starting position, it'll really help us. So we had that idea that, well, we can go here and make a bandidolio chaggy, but it should look the same up to a point for the 360, and it should look the same up to a point for a dwee chaggy. So we want to have that in mind that when we're throwing the shot, all the same preparation, all the same work leads you to being able to deliver three different shots. And that gives us some flexibility in sparring and how to blend them because I can disguise my intent a little bit better uh, and, and, and I can adapt to suit my opponent. So uh, Richie's gonna talk in a moment about blending or contrasting high and low, but for right now, what I'd like to look at is challenging. Uh, and again, it, it half answers uh, Mrs. Murphy's question, but challenging the spin to help us to improve our ability to do it. So, um, as an example, we'll have a 360 spin and directly into a blitz. So, I'm not gonna throw the full band-aid audio, but you could, where we have from here and directly into our blitz. So the idea being that we have to get our recovery so that we can shoot in with the blitz. So that would be the first one. Of course, the kick could be thrown in full. It just makes the, the balance and recovery a little bit more difficult. We can then look at a 180 recovering into a 360. And by having these alternating, it makes things a bit more challenging. So for example, I my 180 recover 360. I set up 180 recover 360. And by challenging it this way and adding some rhythm to it, we can really challenge ourselves to mix the two shots, recover between the shots and have good balance. So again, 180, recover, 360, so we can return to the start position. 180 on the opposite side, recover, and 360. And as you build up your rhythm, it becomes a little bit more usable because you're returning to a good body position. A similar thing that we can have is use the full spin and the execution of the kick and then lead with the front leg. Because again, it checks our balance on the opposite leg. So where we went here, if my balance is good from here, I can drive pretty easily over the front leg. But in this case, I want to be here and in a position to move out. So I want to be able to spin and move out right away. So we can use some exercises that we can do without a partner to really improve our balance and our recovery. And there's a magical thing that happens when you move beyond trying to get the kick right to try, trying to do something right after the kick, and all of a sudden the kick gets a little bit easier. So introducing an element of challenge beyond what we're trying to accomplish, which is a good reverse turning kick, helps us sometimes, because we're not focusing too much, we're not getting lost in the detail, we make our recovery, and now it's about something else, and by default the kick got better. So Richie, do you wanna talk a little bit about that contrast idea of the, the high and low? Yeah, that, that's a great point there that Adrian just makes about being, being comfortable with the technique. This is really a technique that you need to be comfortable with to be able to throw. And that's a great example that Adrian just used. Um, so you really need to be able to com be comfortable with this um, in practice, in training, etc. before you feel ready to actually throw this and be able to be comfortable to use it when the going gets tough.
um, when, when it's needed in a, in a pressure situation. Yeah? So we'll talk about a little bit more in that later based on Ms. Murphy's question there about constraints and games understanding, etc. We can um, give you some ideas on how to put the pressure. Um, but on contrasting, so for me, um, I like to go on a principle generally that if we elite is generally the most used technique. Okay, so that means we see it a lot, obviously, and then there's high and middle. So shooting to the belt is the longest line directly, and shooting towards the shoulder and the head is the high section. It can be very, very challenging if you've got somebody who's super leggy and they're putting that pressure on you with the front leg. So you know, having that in your back pocket and be able to spin is very, very useful. So imagine that somebody's leaving off their right and they're shooting in this direction. So you, you have the target of the head and the body. So being able to actually bring it low, which is the body, is very useful as well. So somebody shooting for a high side towards my head, very leggy opponent, it's very useful to be able to come under. So the principle is if they're shooting high section, under is available. So it's the same principle as if somebody shoots the side kick towards my head, I can come underneath it. It's the same principle here, it's based on the pace, based on the stance you're on, according to your opponent, etc. You can come under it. Okay, and we've seen some uh, nice tips of that as well from um, David Kerr against Colin Adox in the World Championships before. So we, we've seen uh, how they that tip on Fight Chart Friday. So shots coming forward really high, and you just come under it. Okay, and not tending to the head specifically allows you to really disrupt that um, high section kick and vice versa. Somebody shooting in the middle, it gives you an opportunity to maybe circle around that direct line towards the head. Alright, so just using that principle of opposites, so the opposite plane is applied, is very, very important. Okay, so we have high section attack, come under it, middle attack, go over. All right, and then obviously it's the opposite of main chair as well. We're talking about with lines. So side kick is a straight line attack. So if they're coming in a straight line towards me, banded up. That's what we got there. Straight line verse is circular, and that's where it really applies here. So if somebody's coming at you in a straight line, by being able to circle around that, it gives you another option as a counter attack. So I hope that makes sense and gives people a bit of idea based on the contrast there. Okay, so maybe it's a good time now to uh, tackle that question from uh, Mrs. Murphy. So, here we go. So, the question is, can you give us an example of a simple game for understanding to help kids improve in applying this technique? And uh, for those of you who are watching and listening to us, myself and Richie talked the whole time on uh, Fight Chat Friday and on a lot of our, uh, our, our social media stuff, about sometimes we'll call it games for understanding more often we'll talk about a constraints that approach um, and really what it's about is letting the game be the teacher or letting the design of the activity teach the activity more so than us as coaches being directive and giving pre-solved solutions to uh, to kids or to, to anyone who's learning so um, I'll give one example and then maybe Richie can expand on it uh, and you know maybe the questions will help us uh, come from there. So uh, the simple principle is we want to construct a game. We want something where both people who are involved in it have something to gain, okay? Uh, they have a way to, to win. They have a win condition. Uh, so they can score points, they can change roles, they can morph, they can do a lot of different things. And we want a decision point where correctly or finding a good solution to the problem rewards one person and overcoming that solution rewards the other person. So here's what we're going to have, just as a start. We need a time when this kick is a really good choice and I'm going to pick a moment particularly from the senior female divisions, even the junior female divisions and a problem that they face a lot of the time, uh, which is you have a leggy opponent and what they will tend to do is they pick up that front leg and they're going to push multiple times coming forwards. It might not be especially fast, and often it's just presenting a threat. And this can happen an awful lot when they have their opponent towards the edge of the ring as well. So, poor Bob here is at the edge of the ring, and I'm here, and just to make Bob react, I'm gonna put a threat there. So we'll set it up a scenario where the ring is small, maybe only four meters, so the one person is always considered to be towards the edge, 
maybe they're not allowed to take any actions until the other person lifts the front leg and they have two choices okay so they can lift and carry with the leg in the air okay or they can lift drop and go directly to hands perhaps okay so maybe that's where we start so we give them two ways to score for the other person of course they're looking to pick the right moments when the leg is in the air but they can move they're not constrained to waiting for it they can move they can interact and we might also give them an attack something else to keep them busy but their success is when they can make any contact to the body the glove or the head on this side or the head on this side so this person's on the edge I'm presenting a target for them and as the leg is coming up they have the opportunity to come under to the body to come up to the head of course they could also move make me follow around and then they can use the technique itself as an attack so they could take the reverse turning kick in attack or defense perhaps in that scenario Richie, do you want to expand on that one and maybe give us some ideas about how we might develop it or the problems we'd expect to see in that game? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I just popped in to the comment, the chat box there, guys, a link. Um, so it's one of the links that we've used before. Uh, from TKD Coach Academy. It's just a game, uh, a sparring game called Spin to Win. And just, it just entices a little bit more spinning. And things like that of course this can be quite tricky like adrian's um, exercise there is a very good one but as instructors usually we're a bit conscious of this especially with younger kids because using banded dolly shaggy and techniques like this to head and trying to facilitate them in sparring in life situations can be tricky and you want to be super careful obviously in terms of safety and um, especially with, with kids who maybe yell about screen belts, etc. And um, so basically this game that we uh, linked in, you can just see it, I'll put it in the in the links in the description as well for anybody who may be watching this afterwards. It's very simple. And um, the rules of sparring are the exact same, except the only techniques that you're allowed to use are any spinning kicks. And then if you land spinning kick make one. so just by controlling the rules and techniques that are allowed it just instinctively encourages a lot more and um, spinning techniques so you see the example uh, like it's a real life example with some competitors and um, former national team competitors etc using it as an example so maybe that could be something that will give you an idea so very simple if you can just constrain a certain part whether it's the rules whether it's the ring size whether it's the it doesn't really matter the equipment etc so by constraining something and just putting rules in place and then just allowing the athletes or the, the members whatever to explore the concept of spinning techniques you'd be very surprised what they come up with the creativity they'll come to um, to be able to land these techniques etc so you can award different points then based on the difficulty so maybe if you land a banded and you score five points etc so obviously you can you can Manipulate the scoring system, etc., to facilitate and people to try these techniques a bit more. Because as we know, like we just, for example, in the one I use where you're trying to shift back to counter and stuff. And if you've seen any of the videos that we've used over the last week, it's very much um, an idea to be able to land this. You need to have a great awareness of distance. You need to have a great awareness of timing, etc. And these only really come from working with another partner in a live situation. And uh, the idea that Adrian gave there was fantastic and we really um, tried to push the whole idea of both sides being active. So by me holding a pad here and Adrian doing banded double shaggy all day, that's great to give them an initial foundation to be comfortable with the kick, but then we need to build on that. And that's where these constraints and these games that we're showing you, etc., really um, allow people to explore the concept and the shot a bit more. And then maybe you're seeing that they're not landing it because, I don't know, maybe they're spinning with a tall body posture or something we spoke about today. Then that's your opportunity to get in there and give feedback and encourage. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a long one question. If you ask us anything based on this, me and Adrian are gonna really get bogged down and go down a rabbit hole most likely, but I hope it gives people uh, real value when it comes to um, developing their sparring training. Okay, so uh, I think that is the the, the last of the immediate questions, so uh, if anyone has one that they're scrambling and putting in there, uh, we will just uh, uh, give you a minute to do that and we'll happily answer. Uh, other than that, I suppose we'd like to lead into what we're going to uh, focus on for 
uh, next Friday's uh, Fight Chat Friday, and we do have a particular topic in mind for that. So maybe I can ask Richie to uh, give a, a quick heads up on the topic for next Friday. Yeah, so guys, um, next week on, well, this Friday really, we're going to be covering um, footwork specifically. So we might look at different ways that footwork can be used and applied and some ways it's really useful. Apply them and evade, maybe to set up shots, maybe to um, talk about balance, being able to throw shots from anywhere, etc. So we'll probably look at it from a couple of different angles. If anybody has real specific questions or wants us to get into something in particular, uh, send us a message, drop it in the chat box here below, or just send us a message on social media, we'll get into that. And then next Tuesday, obviously, uh, we're going to try to bring those back into practical takeaways. I think footwork is a good one, that we can really give you real practical stuff to use um, here in training, and we can actually get a bit of a session going, as opposed to a bit more of a tutorial vibe that we had today. It's great to have both, um, I'm, I'm hoping everybody's taking some bits away, even if you take away one piece. That's fantastic, you know. So um, hopefully next week will be a bit more hands-on, a bit more of a practical session, and we'll give you some more ideas at the end like we just did today of how to build on that then to make it more representative. So that's the most important thing, to be able to make it really representative to bring it into your sparring and not just leave, leave in isolation training. Because ideally and realistically, you're not really going to be able to get the benefits of it in a real-life spar if you only train it in isolation. And to a question here from Lawrence, do you have an example of footing exercise that includes the reverse turning kick? Um, even do you have any ideas on that one? Okay, so if we're looking at some footwork exercises, I suppose, that are going to increase the ability to use the reverse turning kick for sparring. So uh, they come under two categories for me. The first one is about balance and recovery. So it's your ability to throw the shot and recover. And the focus in all of those is going to be challenging your balance and recovery and then increasing the rhythm of it. So we'll give you one or two exercises there in just a second. We'll show you those. And the second one is about looking at footwork opportunities to maybe enable you to throw the kick. And so maybe we'll do them first. So um, that would be about putting yourself at a good angle or at a good distance to make the kick happen. So, for example, and again, these are all a little bit contrived because Bob doesn't move. Okay, so... We sometimes have to imagine how Bob might be moving as well. So as a very, very simple thing, if we've come into hands, boom, boom, we would normally imagine that Bob would be drifting back. But one of the things that we need to do is, for example, reset the feet very, very slightly, create a small break in the rhythm before the kick. So Bob won't be far enough away. But as I get in here, I have a small reset, and then we have the hit. Bob should be a little further away. I shouldn't have to lean a little bit for, uh, 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 quite as far back. But that small gap when you reset the feet does create a little break in rhythm. So it's like his head was here, and that small gap lets it go that little bit further away so that we can make contact. Um, other ideas just in terms of footwork to make uh, the shot landable. Um, we might make a slight V, or V cut. So in other words, I'm going forwards to draw a kick and making a small angle so that I'm off the line, which again, lets me throw the shot as the person is stepping into it. And this can work simply because they're coming forward. If you do it with Bob, it doesn't work quite as well because Bob doesn't kick. So the distance that I need isn't quite correct because Bob should be coming forward. So I have to go a little closer to Bob and cut here before making my shot. Going back to some of the rhythm challenges that we were, uh, I was uh, leading to there, add your steps. So for example, simple things like we can have forward step, back, spin, forward step, back, spin, forward step, back, spin. And if we can continue movements like that in rhythm, it gives us a very good way of um, testing ourselves, seeing how we manage our center of gravity. Same thing can happen when you're working off of the, the legs with your kicks, so that you, know, you can have here, land, back, spin, land, back, spin, and so on. And be inventive, because when it comes to challenging balance and recovery, it doesn't have to be appropriate to sparring. It just has to challenge you. So from the kick, maybe land, you have a sidestep, something else happens. So we have that with the old H drills, where it's, you make a step forward, back, left, or right before the technique. And so those kind of things will help you 
to improve your footwork so the shot can be thrown. But the best thing is get a real life opponent who puts themselves at awkward distances and that will really help develop the footwork. And yeah, fantastic. Um, so I was just trying to link up that spin to win thing for everybody there, guys, but it doesn't seem to be going through. So through, come back and maybe Adrian can do something on his side. He's the production guy that we have there. So uh, we'll see, we'll make some work for that. Don't worry, we'll get it out. He probably come back onto this video and it will be in the description, most likely. Um, so yeah, so just a quick recap, guys, to give you to pull tie all that stuff together. Um, so basically, we worked on some preparation and capacity stuff today, really, and how to develop the physical attributes to be able to really get this kick done. And Adrian gave us some fantastic exercises there with that. And then we really broke it down into three steps of the kick. So really looking at predominantly the counter attacking side of it, we had the prep. So we're looking at the body positioning, the stepping of the foot, the use of the hand and the body together. And then second off, we had the shot itself. So just looking through some of the notes to give you guys a bit more um, takeaways. So getting the eyes on the target, getting low, rotating the hips in like a helicopter motion. We had the foot versus heel um, discussion and then the distance adjustment. So having a, in the hook kick motion versus reverse hook. A reverse turning kick, sorry. So by having it like a hook kick, a bit more closer range and a bit more extended, we had the reverse turning kick. And, and then we have the whole idea of the standing foot, the circle, uh, the two options of countering, so coming high, coming low. Uh, and then Adrian went through a lot of rhythm drills and some ideas on how to incorporate that. And then finally, the third piece we had was the recovery. So the option of coming all the way through in a full 360 or coming through in just a 180 and landing to the front. Uh, and then we had some steps based on the two types as well. So of bringing that front leg back to the back to set it up on the open side and a couple of more ideas based on constraints and things like that. So hope there were some takeaways there for everybody. And um, leave us know in the comments how you enjoyed that. Any questions, any feedback, we're only just kind of getting into these sessions, so no doubt that they will um, kind of adjust as we go along. So all feedback is welcome. Get involved, take a picture, take a snap of this session, get it up on your social media, in your story, tag us, TKD Coach Academy, we'd be delighted to share them on our own page, get the, get the word out there. Thanks to everybody who tuned in from all over the world. We have some people from really far away, Africa, I can only imagine what time it is over there in Mozambique. So thanks so much to uh, you for tuning in and guys in the USA as well from uh, far afield. So that's great to see. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Really hope you took some value. Hit the video a like, subscribe, and we'll see you on Friday. Fight you on Friday. If not, see you on Tuesday. Thanks very much, guys.